the pearl was the first gem to be enjoyed by humanity, since for our ancestors, it was possible to find a gem that did not need any cutting or polishing. It was beautiful from the very beginning. And in no other place in the world did the pearl attain such a level of perfection as it did here in the Sea of Cortez, Mexico. Adventurers from the Age of Discovery traveled long distances and endured hardships in their search for treasures. But to most of them, Mexico's northwestern region and its Sea of Cortez would prove more challenging than any other part of the New World. The man who would open this sea and its treasures to Europe was the conquistador par excellence, Hernán Cortés. His will gifted Europe with a grand treasure, pearls with the most intense colors ever seen. From that moment, Mexican pearls reigned supreme for almost 400 years, becoming the favorite gem of kings, queens, and mighty rulers, to whom it held the highest esteem for its beauty, rarity, and uniqueness. In Europe, the Americas became known as the land of pearls. In order to satisfy Europe's thirst for the Sea of Cortez Pearl, fishermen scourged the waters in search of pearl oysters, leading to the virtual depletion of the pearl beds. And consequently, this pearl all but disappeared from the world's gem markets by the 1930s. But before the full depletion of the Gulf of California's pearl beds occurred, a man by the name of Gaston Vives realized that given the minimum fraction of pearl oysters that yielded a good pearl, the fishery would eventually collapse. So Gaston Vives took a more constructive approach. He built the first pearl oyster farm on the planet. This pearl farm was a true technological marvel well ahead of its time, but it became an innocent casualty of the Mexican Revolution. In the years to come, the magnificent pearl from the Sea of Cortez faded in time and became a legend of old lore. The Sea of Cortez Pearl has made a comeback in the town of Guaymas, Sonora. Right here in the placid waters of Baco Chibampo Bay is where the only producer of cultured pearls in the entire American continent has found its home. At this university campus of the Tec de Monterrey, it's where a group of graduate students came up with a dream to revive the pearl industry in 1993. And this is where the experimental and commercial research phases were developed. At present day, the same university still harbors this venture. Pearl farming on this site depends on a unique native species to produce its pearls, the concha nacar, or rainbow-lipped pearl oyster, also known by its scientific name of Teria sterna. This is the only pearl farm that uses this particular variety of pearl oyster for the production of cultured pearls. This organism is capable of producing the most incredible natural colors, such as blue, purple, green, gold, pink, black, and gray, always with varied iridescent overtones, allowing the pearls to display different colors. There are never two identical pearls in a harvest. Pearl cultivation is not an activity for the faint-hearted. Up to four years are needed in order to obtain a harvest of pearls. During this long period, pearl farmers must first raise their pearl oysters, care for them, and endure nature's constant threats, such as hurricanes and changing environmental conditions. The very beginning of the pearl culture process is spat collection. This activity takes place every winter exactly when pearl oysters propagate by releasing their gametes into the surrounding waters. Thus, fertilization takes place in the sea, and as a result, there will be millions of free-swimming microscopic larvae. About a month later, they will have grown to a point when they're finally ready to begin an oyster-like existence and need an adequate place to do so. At this farm, we utilize a passive collecting system to attract baby pearl oysters, or spat, by offering the tiny animals a pleasant place for them to settle. One month after this event, they will reach a visible size and will be manually removed to be introduced into special rearing baskets. 
Culturing inside mesh baskets protects the animals from their natural predators and also allows for an adequate flow of nutrient-rich water. Since pearl oysters are filter feeders, they use their gills to feed on plankton. Pearl farmers don't feed their oysters. Nature takes care of that. Feeding may not be a concern, but there are other important considerations here. Pearl oyster culture involves intensive manual labor and maintenance. It is of the greatest importance to clean every oyster by hand, removing the plants and animals that foul the oyster shell. Without this maintenance, the animals would weaken and become incapable of producing fine pearls. Every pearl oyster then must be extracted from its basket for this essential procedure five times every year. At an age of two years, pearl oysters are fully mature and ready to undergo a surgical procedure to promote the production of a cultured pearl. Pearl farmers know they cannot depend on the incidence of natural pearls to sustain a commercial operation. In nature, only one oyster will yield a good quality pearl out of 10,000 oysters harvested. This delicate operation is performed by specialized individuals with the skills, experience, and knowledge needed to coax the pearl oyster into producing a beautiful cultured pearl. The seeding operation is quite complex, yet its logics are simple. A mother of pearl bead is placed inside the oyster's reproductive organ and a piece of graft tissue from a donor oyster is placed alongside. Sounds simple, doesn't it? Now imagine you are looking inside an oyster that gaps open less than one and a half centimeters wide and you have to perform the operation in less than one minute for the oyster to survive. We are fortunate to be able to produce yet another kind of cultured pearl, the mabe or mabe pearl. This variety of pearl is grown attached to the oyster's inner shell and results in a large pearl that perfectly displays this pearl's colors, subtleties, and remarkable beauty. On the other hand, the mabes require detachment from the shell, allowing it to have varied shapes, suitable for many different styles of jewelry and one-of-a-kind items. Once the oysters have undergone surgery, they are placed once more in protective baskets for an additional two years. During this time, the oysters will slowly secrete delicate layers of nacre on top of their seeds. Time is a very important factor for pearl quality. The longer the pearl stays under appropriate culture conditions, the thicker its nacre coating will become. Ultimately, this means your pearl will be able to express its full beauty, becoming a true heirloom, a piece that will endure the test of time. Harvest involves the extraction of the pearl. Only 19% of the oysters operated on will produce a cultured pearl with a quality needed to be considered a Sea of Cortez pearl. Pearls that do not meet this criterion will be returned to the sea. Product integrity is another factor that distinguishes the Sea of Cortez pearl from all other pearls in production today. For this reason, the pearl is guaranteed to be devoid of any treatment, either chemical nor physical, to alter its appearance. Of course, full product integrity means helping maintain a healthy natural environment, being socially responsible. These elements have given this unique gem recognition as the first pearl of the fair trade gem list. The Sea of Cortez pearl demands intensive attention from its producers, limiting the amount of pearls to less than 4,000 a year, making this cultured pearl the rarest in the world. In this sense, this activity is similar to that of an artisan who's placing his skills and feelings into his creations. Compare this annual production with that of other cultured pearl varieties. Freshwater pearls, 1,800 tons. Akoya pearls, 50 tons. Black pearls, 12 tons. White and golden South Sea pearls, 11 tons. Sea of Cortez pearls, four kilos or four one thousandths of a ton. As we've seen, the Sea of Cortez cultured pearl is a special gem. It holds the essence of the Gulf of California through its history and its environment. And in its beauty and uniqueness, it will capture your imagination.